Right. In meat and milk, too, the alkaline is the silver that you see. is an animal that is really enormous since it can go to 125 pounds average. Uh, legend says that there is one floating around around China that's 350 pounds. I'll believe it when I see it. Next one is one that's a little smaller but can also co go quite big. This is the sockeye. The sockeye is, is really interesting as well as this pink here that you see because both of them have already on their skin, that pink color, that they develop when they go back to their rivers after thousands and thousands of miles in the ocean. These fellows go about three, four times back to their birth river. These fellows go only once. But those, that's why they're so big and so strong, travel about eight to 12,000 miles in their lifetime before going back to their rivers. When they get back there, they get to be dark red. And I've seen them last year in Alaska. All these come from Alaska. This is Alaska cash flown in especially for your show and absolutely wonderful. Now, the best eaters, to my taste, now mind you, this is my taste, are those three. Uh, with a definite plus on the king and the silver. The soccer is also very good. Now those are good buys, they are wonderful buys, uh, although most of them, are, these is the, the one that is caught, 51 cent the catch is that pink that you see here, of which there is so much, so that's what you find in your cans. This big baby, the silver bright or chum, is one that is mostly smoked and Europe is importing from Alaska tons and tons of them to smoke them. So here are your salmons, whichever you buy, uh, I can promise you this will be absolutely delightful. Now let me show you how you can find them in the fish store after your fishman, as you call him, has taken care of it. This is your, the filet that you recognize, and most of the time you will see the filet cut in slices like this, which in French we call darne, D-A-R-N-E-S. For those of you who are always intrigued by the French word, that's what it means. Here on the other side, I have the steaks as we know them in this country. This one cut out of the big king that you see here, and this one cut out of the Atlantic salmon that you see there. Notice the difference of color and the difference of texture. Don't think that one is fatter than the other. They have exactly the same amount of fat. They, they are both beautiful fat salmon. This one is recognizable at its bend. This one does not have the bend, but the tissues are extremely rich and delicious. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, this is one of the lowest in cholesterol fish. Now, I'm going to do something for you. Rather than keep the steak like this so that when you cook it, it opens up like this and it gives you all kinds of grief, I'm going to show you how to do something really interesting. I'm going to transform the salmon steak into a salmon medallion. Look at me pass my blade from one end to the other. Keep my blade upward. Do you see my blade going upward? And following my blade with my finger like this, until I get to the end, there we go, and I'm cutting that center skin. Now, I'm going to remove it from the bone here, continuing this, and you will see here the pin bone happening, and you'll see me snip them. I missed, so I'm pulling it out. There we go. Make sure that the bone is appearing as clean as possible. There we go. Here we have one side done. Now, let me turn it over. So I'm going to do the other side, exactly the same thing. Notice how I steady my blade like this to pass through at once. There. Now I'm continuing down, the same thing. Keep it very, very flat on the board. Eh? These are beautiful. All the kings, are, the Alaskans are always superior because they are so big that you can make the most beautiful medallions out of it. If anything, uh, I think the portions are really uh, enormous, but it doesn't matter, they taste so good. There we go. Remove the meat, remove the meat, there we go. Make sure that you don't leave any. Don't worry about these little teeth that I'm doing here. It does not matter. This will disappear as I take care of it. And here's what I'm now going to do. I have done one side, now I'm going to do the outside skin. Notice here, you can look at it on the camera here when I see it, see? This brown tissue, this is the winter coat of the salmon. It keeps it hot and forget, for make sure that it doesn't freeze in the ocean when it gets too cold. Especially up there in Alaska, it's pretty terrible. So I'm contouring this. Look at me contouring it and going around it 
and making sure that I don't take those brown tissues. Now, sticking out here are some of the pin bones. I'm going to pull them out. Look, they come all by themselves. Or if one or two are left, you know, don't you worry too much. However, don't destroy the meat. Now, look at me. I'm going to now do this. Turn this over so the center part of the salmon is with the center part on each side. Then I'm going to turn it around, twist it around like this, and make sure that I pack this solid together. And then with four two speaks, I'm going to absolutely make sure that all this stays very well together. One, two, okay, here three, and four. Make sure that both little tails are nicely tucked. And now you have your little salmon steak, not quite that good here. See, pull, pull tight. Can you see me pull it tight? And then stick it right there. Now, your salmon steak is ready. You can see it a little looking a little nicer on the other side. And I'm getting ready after this to show you how to do diverse preparations with them that will be absolutely delicious. We will continue with Madeline Cooks on the Learning Channel. Rediscover the history, the beauty, the magic and romance of lighthouses, Guardians of the Night, Wednesday at 10 on TLC. I love days that never end, playing let's pretend, laughing till I cry, and friends. And I love you too. You'll love the great taste of America's number one snack cake. Little Debbie. And I love you too. Alaska fishermen go through agony to bring you a taste of ecstasy. Alaska seafood, far and away the world's finest. At a prestigious cheese competition, Cracker Barrel Cheddar wins a gold medal for excellence. It's 18th. The taste inspires a Munster, Vermont Cheddar, Havarti, Baby Swiss. Each made with the same care as our award-winning cheddar. Cracker Barrel from Kraft. Judged to be the best. When's the last time you tried Ovaltine? I had a glass with lunch. I don't always eat right, so I make sure to have some Ovaltine to help keep me going. Just two glasses of classic Ovaltine and milk contain more than 10 essential vitamins and minerals. Almost 100% of the daily recommended allowance of all these important nutrients. Best of all, Ovaltine tastes great. I mean, really delicious. Classic Ovaltine. Tastes great, and it's great for you. In a remote corner of the Canadian Arctic lies one of the best preserved impact craters on Earth. It is over a million years old. 20 city blocks across and deep enough to swallow the Empire State Building. But where did it come from? How was it formed? And what mysteries lie hidden beneath its crystal clear waters? Explore the secrets of the lake that fell to Earth with host James Burke on the next Science Frontiers, Thursday at 9 on The Learning Channel. We now continue with Madeline Cooks on The Learning Channel. The first recipe I'm going to show you is how to steam a medallion of salmon like this. And I'm going to accompany it by the absolute wonderful dressing for a salmon, which is dill and lemon. I will make a dill and lemon compound butter. First, let me show you the steamer. I have here the bottom of a steamer in which, obviously, there is boiling water. These are the top of the steamer, the basket, in which I'm going to install the medallion, like this. And this is another way that you could use also, which is known as a Chinese basket. As you can see, it can fit on almost any of your parts. Now, let me show you how to wrap the medallion so that I can have it looking exactly like those that I put in the basket before. Here is the piece of plastic wrap that I have here. I'm going to cut it so it just covers the salmon medallion. Look at it this way, like this, like this, 
cut it again so that there's not too many thicknesses. There we go. It's all wrapped and it goes into my steamer basket that you see here. Obviously, this is boiling. Why did I wrap it in plastic? The reason I did this is because the steam, what I'm going to do is put that basket here. You're going to see me do this right away over that boiling water. Then I'm covering it to imprison the steam under between the water boiling and between the top of the lid. That steam will go down over the salmon and coagulate it extremely strongly. So that your poor salmon, if you were going to leave it just bare like this, even if you brushed it with oil, would be all dehydrated and all hard afterwards. So to prevent it from being all hard like this, take that piece of plastic, wrap it, put it in, and you have a protection around it. You could put a lettuce leaf, as the French do, as people have done since the Greek times, as a matter of fact. Now, as far as the compound butter, it's easy as punch. Here we go. I have it finished here. And the thing for me is to show you how to get from here, which is all the elements of the compound butter, to there. Here is a quarter pound of butter. Here is chopped dill that you can see. Here is a little bit of not too much, huh? just a tiny bit of very, very finely grated uh, um, lemon rind. A little bit more of dill, uh, a good pinch of salt about 10 turns of pepper right from my meal and the whole thing is going to go whirling into my food processor. There we go, the food processor was even on for me, you can see that. Wait until the butter turns absolutely green. Huh? Turn it off and on for a little while so that your butter has a chance to mellow completely and you're going to see me work it totally again over a piece of plastic wrap. By the way, I did not tell you but the plastic wrap I used was a very strong one for microwave, otherwise it would melt under the steamer bottom. There we go. Now my butter is done. I'm going to turn it off, remove it from the processor, and with a plastic rubber spatula, which I have here, completely put it over that piece of plastic that I have here. Pile it here in the center. As you can see, it becomes soft extremely quickly. There we go. Now that you do this, you're going to bring the plastic over like this, and with a spatula, just shape up a little saucisson, as we say in French, guess what? My plastic broke, huh? It couldn't be otherwise, huh? You have only to be on television for the plastic to break, right? But that's okay. Don't worry about it. Twist it like this. I got there anyhow. You can see it. I have exactly the same as I had before, all right? There we go. Now I'm going to keep the hard one, the one that has gone in the refrigerator, is nice and hard, I'm going to keep it to be able to decorate the top of my salmon steaks. Now, as usual, you know, I like to make a whole dinner. And to serve as vegetables for you, I have a few zucchini that are here. And you cut your zucchini in half and remove the center with a spoon, as I showed you sometimes, or will show you sometimes, for uh, cucumbers. It's exactly the same system. Do remove the seeds from the center. If you have a little melon bowler, the melon bowler works a little better because it's even instead of having that unevenness. Then remove that and cut them in half moons like this. And as you can see, I have some that are ready here in a little bowl, which I'm going to cook for you. Now, here is Popeye's favorite, uh, the spinach. I'm going to do the spinach and I have my plate here ready for me to receive my salmon dinner. So let's put the plate. There we go. The salmon dinner will come in the center, and around this will come the wilted spinach. Take a look at me work on the spinach. The spinach, you put a lot. The problem with the spinach is that it loses a lot of volume, and look at me doing it literally with my hand and turning it with my hand into the heat. You know what's good for that? Your good old Chinese walk, in which you go very, very, very fast, huh? Very fast, there we go, there. A little bit of salt and pepper over here. Very little. Now you salt this as much as you like. You know, I always leave this to your disposition. It's up to you to salt as much or as little as you like. Turn again. And this spinach should just lose its shape and just deflate. That's all it does. It does not cook. It just deflates. It's excellent for your health. Total income of vitamin. Geez, I'm going to be in trouble there if I keep continuing putting it on the stove. There we are. I'm going to put it there and you'll see it continue cooking into the pan. 
Meanwhile, I'm going to bring the zucchini here to the heat also a little bit. Now, these zucchini, you don't want to cook them much, just a wee bit, that's all. Let's leave them here for the time being until I unwrap one of my salmon steaks here. Look at this. This is absolutely fabulous. Huh? You're going to be surprised at how good they look. Cut right through this. Try not to break it if you can. Be very patient because the plastic is very tough and very good and you'll see why it absolutely uh, contains the whole salmon in one piece. Remove those four toothpicks. Huh? Don't do like one of my girls did in the restaurant. She left the toothpick on the plate. So that was quite something. Salmon steak comes right here. Okay? Around salmon steak is going to come a little bit of spinach or not that whole amount. Obviously that would be too much. We have at least three portions there. I'm taking the leaves that are the best wilted. There we are, kind of nice. And my zucchini, meanwhile, are going full speed. I'm going to bring them here so they go a little faster. And look at my compound butter. I'm going to open it here from its plastic and cut little slices out of it. Aha, yeah, that's always the big problem with the plastic. It doesn't want to open. Well, force it to open. There we go. Here's your butter. You see how I hold it? Now, cut little slices like this on the slant. One, paper thin. You don't need to have too much. Two, you put even a half slice here, like that. A nice little bunch of dill in the center, just a tiny little sprig of dill to show people that you have used dill. And here come your zucchini, all finished and ready. Take a look at it, it did itself all by itself. And what you do is you put a few zucchini like this here and there just to have a difference of color. You don't need to be quite orderly, it is not necessary. Let this fall all by itself the way it feels like falling by itself. There we go. And what you're going to do with your hand is center your plate afterwards. Let me show you that. Here, take your plate and with your hand center it nicely like this so the white of the plate appears on the outside. Take a look at the butter melting. This is really beautiful. Have a lovely dinner. Then I'm going to go on and show you another way to prepare that salmon. We'll continue with Madeline Cooks on the Learning Channel. You can do it yourself. It just takes determination and good advice from home time. Join us weekdays at 4.30 and 7.30 on TLC. If you have this much to read and you're only reading this much, then make yourself a super reading machine with the incredible Speed Reading Hand Video Program. Learn the proven methods that can get you reading three to five times faster with better comprehension. Imagine being able to zip through novels, textbooks, business reports, and anything else with complete understanding. And it's so easy that anyone can learn to do it. The Speed Reading Hand Video Program comes complete with a powerful study guide, but that's not all. As a bonus for ordering now, you'll also receive free the audio tape Super Memory Power, where you'll learn to memorize anything quickly and easily. And if you use your credit card to order right now, you'll also receive the audio tape Mastering Concentration, where you'll learn how to focus your mind to achieve all your goals. All this for the incredible low price of only $39.95, and it comes with a no-risk money-back guarantee. Call toll-free 1-800-235-5900, 1-800-235-5900. Use your Visa or MasterCard. Call now, 1-800-235-5900. Or send check or money order for $39.95 plus $4 shipping to Speed Reading Box 32 Omaha, Nebraska, 68104. Order now. One famous Chinese chef, add a generous helping of southern hospitality, stir in just a hint of French cuisine for that international flavor, and season with one of Canada's most popular cooking experts. And voila, it's the perfect recipe for a perfect afternoon. Find out for yourself why America's really cooking with Martin Yan, Natalie Dupree, Pierre Frenet, and James Barber. Weekdays beginning at 5 on The Learning Channel. This quality adjustable bed costs 50% less than these three quality flat beds. 50% less. Yet Craftmatic offers these advantages over flat beds. First, it adjusts electrically at the touch of a button. So you can read in bed, watch TV in bed, snack, chat on the phone, do a crossword puzzle, and relax and sleep in wonderful comfort. Plus, if you suffer from low back pain or edema or swelling of the legs, 
unlike any ordinary flatbed. An adjustable bed may temporarily provide relief. Call toll-free to receive this free adjustable bed catalog by mail. Get the facts about the adjustable bed that costs 50% less than all three of these quality flatbeds. 50% less. Call for your free catalog now. Call toll-free 1-800-445-4000. That's 1-800-445-4000. Call toll-free 1-800-445-4000. We now continue with Madeline Cooks on the Learning Channel. Now, would you please take a look at what I'm doing? I'm putting my hand in the pan, and this is very sufferable. It is not hot. It is just lukewarm, warm really, with the butter barely melted into it. The technique I'm going to use for cooking this time that Norwegian salmon, look at the difference of color, is known as pan steaming. Uh, I don't know whether it exists in the books or not. I made it up for myself and I'm very happy with it. So that's why I continue it. You're going to see me do this. I'm going to coagulate each side of the salmon on really low heat, very gradually until I get the heat to go to the very center of the salmon. Gradually look at me, I'm turning it over. You'll see me turn it over as much as I can and about every two or three minutes until I have it done to the degree that I want, which is just beautiful, mellow, tender, so that no water whatsoever escapes out of the salmon. Now, I'm going to make a little substitution. This reduction will not be finished until three quarters of an hour from now. So here's one which is finished. And that one that is finished has enough liquid for me to bring it to a high boil, all right? So here we go. It's coming on a high boil within minutes. There you can see it on the high boil. I'm going to do the famous beurre blanc. You know what everybody does. I call it nicely a white butter. Everybody calls it beurre blanc, whatever you want. Just call it white butter. Everybody will be happy and will all understand what it means. What do do is put a nice big piece of butter and in the violently boiling thing, you whisk it, whisk it, whisk it until your butter goes into emulsion, okay? And you make sure, look at me, the sauce is building very, very easily. You make sure, however, look at what I'm doing, to cut it as you go along with a tiny bit of fumet as you go along so that you make sure not to break it because it's very high. Butter, okay? How, look how easy it is. Huh? Everybody has used absolutely trembling on the stove with that white butter. Here it is being done under your eyes with the greatest of ease and no problem whatsoever. Butter, a teeny bit of fumet. Okay, that's it. Now, look at me again. I'm going to turn my salmon steaks. You can see this time that they are much more coagulated. You see them come along. Yeah? It will take seven or eight minutes. These are actually a little too thick. So this is why they are taking much more time than they should. And finally, when I get there, I'm going to put that lid on top of it to imprison the heat under that lid and between the pan so I have the wonderful heat concentration that I want to throw the heat to the center and finish completely cooking the salmon steak. Now, with a veg as a vegetable with this salmon, here comes a cucumber, which I dearly love. I always love cucumbers. And I'm going to make sure to show you how to make cucumber noodles. You cut them real thin like this. You can also use a potato peeler, that's fine. Huh? Cut them real thin. And this time, instead of cutting them in the length, as we may have done before, I'm going to cut them on the diagonal, like this, OK? All right, put a piece of butter here. There we go. And I have some, obviously, that are ready for me. You don't think that I'm unprepared like that. Here we go. They go on high heat. I'm going to transfer them up here where the heat is still high and toss them into that hot butter so I have them as hot as I want, OK? There we go. Salt and pepper on top of it again. And then I'm going to decorate my plate with my salmon and do this in a matter of minutes. You'll see that my salmon steaks have finished cooking here. There they are. And I'm going to take the most beautiful of all to put on my most gorgeous plate that you see here. Why don't I make a little space for you over here. There we go. Let's remove all that. And let's bring here that salmon steak. Don't forget to remove your two speaks. Actually, I'm not going to remove them all. They are a little too deep. So uh, you know that they are there, right? Uh, you will remove them. There we go. Very good. Now, on top of this, I'm going to take some of my sauce and strain it. 
There we go. Like that. Just a wee bit. Huh? Take my cucumber and install them all around. Nicely. There we go. I'll crop them afterwards, that's no problem. Okay. And two little chives to go on the top to build a lovely little plate that is quite happy looking. And there you are. Open them like this so they look pretty. This is it. With that, a good glass of champagne and you're all set. Enjoy your dinner. Have a wonderful time. Watch the foam. at chicken in a pig's bladder. I have seen this done once and it's quite a, a surgical problem to put the chicken in the bladder, but it's really interesting. But that gave me an idea that I could cook whole chicken in plastic bags. And then when I came to be on the faithful cholesterol-free diet myself, uh, I decided maybe cooking the chicken breast in a plastic bag would also be interesting, not only because of the lack of calories, but because of the lack of time involved in it. So watch me, it's going to be quite interesting. So here are little breasts ready. And here is my cooking bag that I have right here. And look at me, just open it and in it pour a little bit of corn oil. Now you can, if you want, use olive oil for those of you that have no problem with cholesterol problem. Olive oil will be absolutely perfect and delicious. And also you could rub it with uh, margarine, but I do personally prefer corn oil. So that's why I do it with corn oil. So do put your oil in there and just spread it with your hand between the two sides of the bag. And when you open it, you will find that the oil is evenly in repartition on both sides of the bag. Now I'm going, you can see here those two ingredients, the limes and the coriander, uh, which is also called cilantro or Chinese parsley. I did grate some of the lime. I'm mixing it here with the cilantro, or Chinese parsley, or coriander, and I'm spreading it all over my little chicken breast there to give them a real good taste, right? There we go, a real good taste. And I'm going to put, don't hesitate to put plenty, it tastes really delicious. There is no butter, there is no sauce, there's nothing on this, so what you need is really a good taste of herb. And here I'm coming to my bag, and I'm taking my chicken breast. Now, I'm gonna put a pinch of salt, because I really think that uh, I don't like it without salt at all. But for those of you that are on salt-free diet, by any mean, don't hesitate to not put any salt. And also a little bit of pepper. There, it will taste a little better. Now, what you do is put them flat in the bag. Put them in the center like this, flat. Stay on your board. Huh? Stay on your board nicely like that. Put them in the bag. Make sure that they don't overlap each other. They can go around each other, but they cannot overlap each other. And you're going to tie your bag nicely, like this. Twist it. Okay, even I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna cut it in half. Look, with the scissors. Oh, the scissors don't work, so I'll take the knife. Okay, cut it in half, tie like this. Huh? to make sure that the water doesn't go into the bag. And then, look at me, I'm transferring them flat on my hand. Here goes a little bit of boiling water in my pan, in which I have a tiny bit of heat. Here go my chicken breast on the bottom, a lid on the top, and I let the water run under the lid so that they will be in the water, which is boiling, but there is absolutely almost no heat under my pan. 
We will continue with Madeline Cooks on the Learning Channel. At a prestigious cheese competition, Cracker Barrel Cheddar wins a gold medal for excellence. It's 18th. The taste inspires a Munster, Vermont Cheddar, Havarti, Baby Swiss. Each made with the same care as our award-winning cheddar. Cracker Barrel from Kraft. Judged to be the best. Want to build customer loyalty? We've got customer loyalty. We've got sports nuts, movie lovers, infomaniacs, and cartoon fanatics. We've got networks that talk to moms, teens, men, kids. From Main Street to Madison Avenue, more advertisers are turning to cable. Want to build your brand of business? Check out our brand of TV. Cable TV. America's sold on cable. Sure I use it every time I pay my bills. It's fun. <laughs> Come on, paying bills is fun? Yeah, fun. It, it's always fun when you're in control. Quicken keeps us organized. So we always know exactly where our money goes. And exactly how much we have. Quicken tracks bank accounts. Investments. Budgets. Tax information. Well, credit cards. College planning. Everything's organized in one place. Quicken, it's easy. If you can use this, you already know how. He's right, it's that easy. Just enter the payee and the amount, and Quicken does the rest. Everything is categorized for you, so you instantly see where your money goes with graphs, like income and expenses, budgets, net worth, and much more. Yeah, it's fast. Quicken reconciles my bank statement in about two minutes. No wonder Quicken's the world's best-selling finance software. It's, it's the, the fastest, easiest way to organize your finances, home or business. To try Quicken free for 60 days, call now. That's right, try it free. We won't charge your credit card unless you decide to keep Quicken. Call now. Thursday night at 8 on the Learning Channel. Why don't you bring your camera a little bit behind my head and you'll see this better. It's unlike anything you've ever seen in prime time. So I make an incision along there. The ultimate in reality television. Can you see that tendon now? Hip replacement surgery. What I'm doing is taking down the muscles on the back of the hip. On the next episode of The Operation, Thursday night at 8 on the Learning Channel. We now continue with Madeline Cooks on the Learning Channel. I'm going to start sauteing my red onion in this pan that you see here, still using corn oil rather than uh, margarine or butter by personal necessity and by personal uh, taste. Here it goes, nice and hot, and here go my onions. You can hear that they are sautéing and kind of jumping in the pan a little bit. And I'm going to stir fry them while I prepare another vegetable, which will be the cucumber. Now, the onion, which is a blue, what they call in science, anthocyanin, will have a tendency, if I cook it like this, to turn absolutely purple and very disgusting looking, so we don't want this to happen. So a little bit of vinegar in there, a little bit of salt will set the color. And this way, I'm not going to have that very unappealing color happen. And they will stay red. Look at them. Do you see them? Nice and red. Now, let me show you the rest of my dish. These are just stir-fried vegetables. Now, see, this should be done now. So what I'm going to do is completely turn the heat off. They are finished and they're just cooking by themselves while you prepare your vegetable. So let me continue this. Did you see I've set the color? No more problem with the color. Everything stays red without turning that ugly blue. Good, now let me show you the other vegetables, which are cucumbers that we have here. And the cucumber is going to be cut in half. Somebody had the kindness to peel it for me. Here goes my cucumber cut in half. And with that spoon that you see here, in that little bowl, I'm going to remove the seeds. Just take the spoon like this. You can use a melon bowler if you want to, but everybody has a spoon. Not everybody has a melon bowler. So here we go. I removed all my little seeds there, absolutely clean, absolutely fresh. Uh, the cucumber seeds, you know, they make water all over the place and they are kind of unpleasant. So we don't want to have them. And then I'm going to cook my cucumber in half moon. Look at me using my fingers. You see, I use the tip of my finger to caliber the slice of my cucumber. There we go. And since I have plenty of them already prepared, 
I want to show you here that I can add them to this without finishing that half so I can go on with my dish. Now, as far as the presentation of the snow peas, here is another possibility. These are snow peas which I have peeled. Now, to peel them, you cut them in half like this. That's all you do. And remove the stand. And if there is any string, the string will come with it. Now, I'm going to cook these by stir frying, but before I cut them in half like this, so that they are a little bit more like the cucumber moons, just very simply like this. Huh? Notice how I always keep my fingers nice and rounded so I don't cut them. Famous last word, you know, one day I demonstrated and I said I did this, and the first thing I did was to cut the tip of my finger. C'est la vie, as we say. There is not much to do about it. Now, a little bit more of corn oil again, and this time I'm going to take a blasting flame. Look at me turn this on real, real high heat so that I can stir fry this extremely quickly. No more than a tablespoon of corn oil. Altogether, the whole meal for four persons will have three tablespoons of corn oil, maximum maybe two and a half, that's all. So this is quite good, isn't it? Now, the ones that will need to cook a little longer are probably the snow peas, so I'm going to start by the snow peas. Huh? Stir frying the snow peas, here they go. Not hot enough, you can hear them. See, they are starting, okay? A little bit of salt on them, like this. A little bit of pepper, okay? And stir fry them nicely. That represents no difficulty whatsoever. Keep them nice and crisp. Huh? There is no need to lose all their body. They have to be nice and crisp and taste good. All they need to do is just start to mellow a little bit and the fibers just soften up a little bit. Take a look, meanwhile, at the fabulous color of my onions. Isn't that fantastic? Now, do you notice the two pans? Huh? I have two pans because should I mix the vinegar into the snow peas, then the snow peas would lose their color. So I gain one to lose the other, which is absolutely out of questions. Now come here my cucumbers, and we have a lovely dish that is almost all ready to give you a beautiful dinner. Let me show you how I would dispose the plate for you. The cucumbers, all you do is Heat them through. Now, the advantage of cooking your vegetables like this, you know it. Here's a French woman who is using a 100% Chinese technique to work, which is to keep these vegetables nice and crisp and with all their vitamins so that you have a maximum of taste out of them. And I keep putting them on the stove and on the counter. C'est la vie. Everybody does that. Now, I'm going to turn this off because everything is ready. And I'm going to show you our chicken breast. I'm going to bring the pan over here and show you our chicken breasts all cooked in their bag, which is really quite interesting and build up a lovely looking plate for you. So you can see how you can entertain calorie free or so to say. Here is the lid going. And you're going to see the breasts coming out in the bag. Here they are. Now to avoid a lot of water, make sure that you have a towel that is ready to receive all your water there. See? Turn this a little bit and open up your bag and extract your little chicken breast. Notice that they have lost absolutely no juice whatsoever. There is no juice to the chicken breast in the bag at all. That means that they cooked without losing their juices and they have retained all the... Look at this, isn't that wonderful? So let me show you how to turn this over so you can carve and not have the contact of the raw ingredient with the cooked ingredient. So you're going to cut them like this. Oh, look at this, they are just beautiful. Look at that. Perfect, absolutely perfect. They are pink in the center with all the juices running in it and perfectly done. Okay, another one. And we'll choose the best slices to do the best plate. But you know, you do this because I am demonstrating for you there to show you the maximum, but at home you would eat the whole thing anyhow. Eh? You would not want to leave the little ends. Well, we say that the little ends are for the cook in the restaurant business, but we don't want to do this. So. Let me decorate that plate for you here. Let me put all this away so we can see where we are going. I'm going to keep the coriander. There we go. And here's my favorite plate, my little donkey that I have had forever. Every time I do television, I've got my donkey. So here comes my donkey back. I'm going to decorate it backwards for you. Look at that texture. Isn't that great, huh? You see, here's a beautiful plate. Let me do it this way. It will be easier. There we go. Do it this way with all these little slices like this. You don't have to do this if you don't feel like it. It is really not absolutely necessary, but I think it does look nice if you do it. There we go, see? 
beautiful little chicken breast, hardly cooked, just barely coagulated, so that you get a really nice texture to it. There, crop this to the center. We're going to put a little bit of coriander there in the center to evocate the taste of the vegetables on the meat, like this. We'll put something else afterwards. And then comes the blending of all our vegetables. This one comes here, see? Here we are. And we are mixing them together. Take a look at the colors. Isn't that just fantastic? Lovely. Pale green to oh, 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 oh. Sloppy cook. Well, I'm sure you do it every day at home, so I feel free to do it too. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper, but on the plate by the portion because I do not want anybody to eat or have too much salt. So here we go. Here's your portion of food. That looks kind of pretty and happy, doesn't it? Here we are. And this is a very, very, very good plate full of veggies that will give you a healthy dinner without having any problem. Continue with Madeline Cooks on the Learning Channel. When's the last time you tried Ovaltine? My kids drink it every day. They don't like plain milk, but they love Ovaltine. Whoever said things had to taste bad to be good for you? Just two glasses of classic Ovaltine and milk contain more than 10 essential vitamins and minerals, almost 100% of the daily recommended allowance of all these important nutrients. Ovaltine brings back wonderful memories, and the whole family loves the taste. Classic Ovaltine. Tastes great, and it's great for you. Take one famous Chinese chef and a generous helping of Southern hospitality, stir in just a hint of French cuisine for that international flavor, and season with one of Canada's most popular cooking experts. And voila, it's the perfect recipe for a perfect afternoon. Find out for yourself why America's really cooking with Martin Yan, Natalie Dupree, Pierre Frenet, and James Barber. Today, beginning at five on The Learning Channel. This quality adjustable bed costs 50% less than these three quality flatbeds. 50% less. Yet Craftmatic offers these advantages over flatbeds. First, it adjusts electrically at the touch of a button. So you can read in bed, watch TV in bed, snack, chat on the phone, do a crossword puzzle, and relax and sleep in wonderful comfort. Plus, if you suffer from low back pain or edema or swelling of the legs, Unlike any ordinary flatbed, an adjustable bed may temporarily provide relief. Call toll-free to receive this free adjustable bed catalog by mail. Get the facts about the adjustable bed that costs 50% less than all three of these quality flatbeds. 50% less. Call for your free catalog now. Call toll-free 1-800-445-4000. That's 1-800-445-4000. Call toll-free 1-800-445-4000. We now continue with Madeline Cooks on the Learning Channel. All right, now let's proceed to another dish, also made with the same chicken breast, but this time in the barbecue style. Now, I'm sure that those of you who live in Texas are going to look at that French woman doing a barbecue sauce and say she's a bit crazy. Some of my Texas friends thought I was a bit crazy. The alarm is probably not high enough for them, so let me do it, and you can always increase your alarm as much as you want. First thing to do is to take your chicken breast and brush them with garlic and olive oil, as I'm doing there, so there is an awful lot of olive oil on it, so it does not stick to the grill. You can also, if you want, 
marinate those uh, chicken breasts in olive oil and garlic for several hours and then the taste will be absolutely wonderful. Here comes my grilled, my whipped grill, sorry. And my rib grill is something that I'm not willing to give up. It's a wonderful thing. But if you use your barbecue, it's the same thing. If you have an old-fashioned uh, flat round one, as they have in Pennsylvania, Dutch country, enjoy it. It's the same thing. Huh? As soon as it's hot, I'm going to put my thing on top of it. Now, here we go. Listen. There we go. See? They start sizzling very well. There we go. Nice and big breast. Very, very meaty and very soft. And with that will go what I call a barbecue compote, which is a very thick barbecue sauce. The barbecue sauce is going to go like this. I'm going to put first some curry. Here's the curry, about a teaspoon of it to cook in the olive oil. So it loses its harshness. And then comes a little bit of cranberry sauce. This is ideal to do after Thanksgiving if you want to use leftovers of turkey or leftovers of whatever other poultry you have done. Here is the tomato sauce. Here will be some currants that I have soaked in water with the soaking water since I need water to finish my sauce. There will be also a little bit of water and some brown sugar since we can't do anything with our brown sugar in America. And also a solid, solid and very strong dash of Worcestershire sauce. I happen to like Worcestershire sauce and some cayenne. Now, that's the alarm. The alarm is yours. Huh? You do what you please. I put about an eighth of an inch, an eighth of a teaspoon on there. If you want more, it's up to you entirely. Now, this will cook for a little while. I'm going to turn my chicken breast over first to show you how nice and brown they are. There we go. See, look at the grill working on them. And I'm going to remove this. This cooks. I mean, cook it as long as you would like. It doesn't matter. As long as you have the texture that I'm going to show you here, which is this one. Yeah? Now, while the chicken breasts are browning, I'm going to push on them real hard so that I can get the whole heat of the boiler to go inside of them. While this is cooking, I'm going to show you how to do a little vegetable with it, which is really quite wonderful. This is, as you realize, a butternut squash. All you have to do is peel it. You see, I use the little potato peeler, the same as you use for all your potatoes, and just cut slices like this, which I have ground in butter. And believe it or not, this squash does not need at all ever to go into water. You never put it in water because this is something that's so soft and so delicious by itself that it cooks in butter without any difficulty. Now, here are my little chicken breasts. They cook, as you can see, and I'm going to turn them over once more so that they look real good. There we go. They're starting to cook for me. You see how they brown nicely? And I'm going to build up a lovely plate for you, just showing you how to serve them. Huh? There we go. So here goes my plate. Nice serving plate, as usual. I'm going to build it right in front of you, right here. Here are my butternut squash, and you can see I have done them on one of my other burner, all nice and brown as I did before. And I'm going to choose this one because I think she looks just the best of all. Here we go. We'll put it in the corner of the plate like this. Then you put your little slices of squash right there and use them on the side where they are the browner, which always looks a lot nicer. There we go. You see how brown they get. And remember, absolutely no trace whatsoever of water on those. You don't need to. They are absolutely wonderful by themselves. In this little corner here, I'm going to put a little bit of my barbecue compote. And here, there we go, to finish up the plate so it looks nice as usual. You know that what an herb fiend I am. So here comes my little herbs to finish up everything so it's awfully pretty. Here they are some tarragon, some parsley, whichever you have in your garden, or if you don't have any, uh, plain old parsley will do very, very well. And I'm lucky today. I have a wonderful little leaf of purple basil, which I like to use all the time. This may be a little too much, but I have a little hole there. Let's take this little bit of it away and clean up the edge of the plate where I have some squash. And here is your little dinner for the day. Okay, no sauce, nothing. 
a little bit of salt and pepper on top of it. That's all you want, and pepper for the meal. Don't salt too much while you cook. You can if you want, but I would rather salt it afterwards so you ingest less and less salt in your diet. And then what you do is put a solid dose of pepper on top of it. Those have been salted and peppered before. You can add a bit more if you want. Enjoy yourself. Have a nice dinner. I will see you sometime again. enjoyed my little tricks of the trade with white meat of chicken and that they appeared new and enticing enough for you to try them at home. There's one more little thing I wanted to tell you. Did you see how I soaked in my French woman's barbecue sauce? <laughs> I soaked my currants in water. In case the sauce appears a little too sweet to you, why don't you soak your currants in vinegar instead of soaking them in water and then add a little more water to your sauce when you continue it. So enjoy yourself, have a good time cooking, and until we meet again soon on this camera, goodbye. It's unlike anything you've ever seen in prime time. Hip replacement surgery on the next episode of The Operation, Thursday night at 8 on TLC. I love sitting here with you. Dreams that come true. Weekends at the lake and snack cakes. You'll love the great taste of America's number one snack cake, Little Debbie. And I love you too. We live in a world of illusions. You see something, you think it's real. Sometimes, sometimes it is. And sometimes it's not. Like counterfeit hair care products that look like Paul Mitchell or say they have the same formula, like the ones you might find in drugstores or supermarkets, don't be fooled by their looks because we can only guarantee they're Paul Mitchell if you get them in a salon. Remember, what you see isn't always what you get. For a Paul Mitchell signature salon, call this number. Wednesday on the Learning Channel in 9 AD, within a dense forest, the legions of Rome Shame, mighty Caesar. Losing in combat to Germanic barbarians. Today, can we locate the battlefield and understand why the celebrated Roman army fell to a lesser opponent? Explore the mystery next time on Archaeology, Wednesday at 8.30 on TLC. For centuries, they have stood alone against the bitter rage of the wind and surf shining their welcoming light on coastlines around the world. Now, rediscover the history, the beauty, the magic and romance of these sentinels by the sea, as TLC presents the U.S. cable premiere of Lighthouses, Guardians of the Night, Wednesday at 10 on The Learning Channel. Ideas and inventions come from people in all walks of life. 
We believe these individuals, like you, are a great source of creativity. If you have an idea, invention, or new product you'd like to submit to industry, Invention Submission Corporation has a free inventor's kit to help you get started. We can show you how your invention can be packaged and submitted to industry. So call ISC now for your free inventor's kit. For your free inventor's kit, call 1-800-235-5900. That's 1-800-235-5900. When you watch Ready, Set, Learn weekdays on the Learning Channel, here's what you'll see. Mice with some mischief on their minds. <laughs> you said it. Book mice. Weekday mornings at 6 and 9. Dancing and singing that will get you up on your feet. Perfect. Join in at 6.30 and 9.30. Some fantastically furry, zany zoobles. Make new friends on Zoobly Zoo at 7 and 10. I can't wait. Come on. And meet someone who makes learning fun. I know all about that. Professor Iris at 7.30 and 10.30. You're always in store for fun and surprises when you open the magic box at 8 and 11. Hooray! 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 And play with some cuddly cats and their frisky friends. Kitty cats at 8.30 and 11.30. Hey, is everyone ready? Ready! It's Ready, Set, Learn weekday mornings only on the Learning Channel. Thanks to your local cable company, you're watching The Learning Channel. I love days that never end, playing let's pretend, laughing till I cry, and friends. For a transcript of this program, send $5 to Burrell's Transcripts, Box 7, Livingston, New Jersey, 07039. And to purchase video cassettes of tonight's stories, call 1-800-848-3256. Experience. Ball. Uh, 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 okay. Do you think this guy stabbed himself? No, sir. I don't know. Is he stabbed? I don't know. I didn't stab no one, sir. I don't know this guy. I swear to God, sir. I don't know this guy. Why would I want to have to start some more trouble and I have to go to court? I didn't do anything, sir. That's all you want to tell me, right? That's Are you it. Done? Okay. That's my behalf. I'm sorry. That's it. Thank you. That's all I know, sir. All right. This is a classic example of a neighborhood dispute gone bad. The suspects and the victims all live in the same complex together. They had a confrontation a week and a half ago, and it just uh, never seemed to fade away. They just uh, kept the confrontation going until what happened tonight, until somebody ended up with a punctured lung and a split open skull. Witness incredible real-life rescues at sea. See what happens as an ocean liner begins to sink like a modern-day Titanic. The history repeat itself. Watch Code 3 next here on Fox Channel 2.
100,000 miles, I was driving home from a bat cave where I'd just seen six million bats. I'd say it would be, uh... When I hit 200,000 miles, I was on my way to a 100th birthday party. I actually, uh... Okay, it happened right where the fence starts on the Lamont Bridge. I don't remember the specific place I was at. Where were you when your Toyota truck hit 100, 200, 300,000 miles or more? Tell us about it. I never start really paying...